The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Welcome to the presentation of FECO Suite 6.3. We have had the release just two days ago, so it's a nice introduction into the new version. My name is Ulrich Jacobus, acting as the FECO product manager. The release is available from our download area on the member's site, feco.info, and uh, many of you have probably already downloaded it and installed it and played around. Some have discovered maybe the new features, and we hope with that introduction to give you an overview of what is new. I have here one slide summarizing a bit the new features. Starting on the user interface side, we have added some healing tools regarding CAD models. And I think many of you will welcome that we have renegotiated our royalty agreement regarding the CAD import and export filters. And we can offer them now free of charge for all licenses with active maintenance and support. Within the user interface framework, we have had uh, automation, as we call it, or macro language capabilities in PostFeco for two years now. We have made a number of extensions there and also included this concept in CATFeco. A very nice modeling construction tool in CATFeco has been added to design windscreen antennas or general elements on curved surfaces. The scripting interface Edit FECO was redesigned to fit into the general look and feel of the other user interface components by now also, for instance, using a ribbon. On the electromagnetic solver side, we have added curvilinear surface meshes and support them in connection with the higher order basis functions for our method of moments and fast multi-level solver technologies. The spherical mode expansion that FICO supports and usage of spherical modes as a source got a number of extensions and improvements. I will discuss all that in more detail just now. Um, we have also extended the concept of ideal receiving antennas from being able to import far field patterns to allowing near field apertures and spherical modes. A, I think very nice extension is that similar to our continuous frequency data, what Adaptfeco does, the frequent fast frequency sweep, we have implemented a similar technology for far field data versus angle to get continuous graphs. We have made a number of improvements to our characteristic mode analysis and I think the most prominent one being the mode tracking capability. So this is really just an overview and let me start with some features regarding our graphical user interface. And there, I first want to start on the CAD importing, exporting, and CAD healing uh, aspects. CAD FECO supports a number of import and export formats to both apply to geometry, the raw data, CAD data, or also mesh on the mesh side. The various mesh import export filters were already included in CAD FECO basically free of charge as part of the channel license because these were our in-house developments. For the CAD import-export options, we only included Parasolid and the other formats like CATIA, Core Engineer, Unigraphics, ACES had to be purchased individually. Um, and as I mentioned in the overview, we were able to renegotiate the contract we have with the supplier of these filters and we are proud to announce that we are able to offer them at no additional cost for licenses under active maintenance and support. If you have used these filters in the past or if you are now going to use them, um, you are probably aware that 
importing CAD formats, CAD files is not a straightforward process. Sometimes you try to import something like this aircraft shown here on the graph and then in the end you find lots of errors and parts are missing. Um, we have added a number of tools which are, can be summarized as CAD healing tools or CAD fixing tools to give you assistance in fixing these corruptions in CAD models or removing details that are not desired for a specific simulation. I can't really go into too much detail here in this webinar other than giving you a brief overview, but we have on the 13th of November, so this is in four weeks time, another webinar specifically focusing on the CAD healing and fixing tools, or if you are getting excited now by my preview and you can't wait until then, we have a very nice video available on our website or also on YouTube illustrating the practical usage of these test fixing tools. I have just selected, I think, three, four, uh, to give you a bit of an idea of what happens. Um, this is, for instance, an example showing a human ear that is imported into CADFACO and after the initial import all you get is what is shown in the top image, so just a few scattered surface elements without being able to recognize what it is. By applying the repair tool and then selecting specific options, typically the default is already a good choice. Um, after the repair, the original geometry can be reconstructed as then shown in the bottom image. Very often it happens if one is importing faces that they don't really nicely connect to each other. It's maybe a bit difficult to see, but once you see on the left hand side there is a small gap. Um, I try to illustrate with my mouse. There is a gap between two edges which don't align nicely or at the top part there might be an overlap of edges and there is a tool repair and so faces that specifically addresses these type of problems. Another very useful tool is called Remove Small Features. Uh, you see here, for instance, at the top image um, some small details. Also, again, I put the mouse there, the one and the other one. And within certain tolerances that can be set in the dialog for that specific tool, these small details can be removed, which in the end then will reduce the number of mesh elements for the electromagnetic solver and have an impact on memory and runtime. And very often for an electromagnetic analysis, that level of detail is not required. Sometimes if you import geometry, there might be certain def defects, like if you remember the ear in the beginning, um, and sometimes some faces are missing or they are not part of the model and we have added also a tool which allows you to very efficiently select a howl and define a surface which will close that howl and the corresponding tool is called the fill howl tool and selecting the boundary edges of such a howl can be a tedious job. In this example here, there are just four, but for more complicated geometry, there could be many short edges forming the boundary of a hole, and the specific tool was added as well, assisting in that process. One can select a single edge forming a hole, and then use a tool, which is called the Select Edge Loop tool, to get the closed boundary uh, marked and highlighted for such a hole and then subsequently the fill hole tool can be applied to construct the surface then uh, closing that hole. Moving away from the CAD fixing and the CAD import filters to another new extension in CAD FECO and this is the ability to exclude configurations and parts, mesh and geometry parts, from a specific model. Uh, in the past, we already had the ability to include and exclude solution requests. 
So you could, for instance, set up a file field request and then decide for a specific run you don't want it and rather than deleting it, it can be excluded and later on again be included. Uh, we have extended that concept to whole configurations and then also on the mesh or geometry side to certain parts of your model. So rather than deleting a structure and then later on realizing, oh, now I need it, one can exclude it, it will be it won't be meshed then, and it won't be part of the simulation, uh, but it's still part of the CAD figure model. On the scripting side, based on Lua, we have also made a number of extensions now in Figure Suite 6.3. Here a bit of a historic overview. The scripting was added in Figure Suite 6.1 two years ago with the primary goal of being a tool to process data in post -FECO. So, for instance, combine different near-field results, do some scaling, whatever. It's a very rich language with lots of mathematical functions. In FECO Suite 6.2 last year, we extended the scripting in post -FECO to be able to basically remote control post -FECO. So, any action you are able to do by clicking with the mouse, by going to the menus, can be automated, like, for instance, changing the color of a trace from red to blue. And now in Figure Speed 6.3, we have taken that Lua scripting environment and implemented it in CAD FECO to be able to automate CAD FECO, geometry creation, and so forth. And we have specifically added a macro library and the, the ability to also create user-defined dialogues from your scripts. So there can be interaction. Instead of having, for instance, parameters in your script, uh, there can be a dialogue. You can completely design the dialogue from the script, which type of spin boxes, radio buttons you want, the groups. You can include images, as shown here at the top at the bottom right graph and uh, users or you can then fill in the dialogues, press the OK button and the script will continue to run. Another new feature is with regards to windscreen antenna modeling and I have to mention that was an extension we made already available uh, end of uh, de December last year as part of a feature update to our previous release Faco Suite 6.2. It was then the Faco Suite 6.2.1, but as it wasn't covered by the Faco Suite 6.2 release notes, uh, we made it an official feature of Faco Suite 6.3, which was just released a bit earlier uh, to accommodate some needs of some customers. This tool allows to use a curved surface as the basis, like for instance the windscreen in the automotive environment, and define a parametric construction space with the correct mapping from a, let me maybe go to the next slide, from a 2D planar UV coordinate system onto that curved uh, windscreen environment and then one has the ability to construct their lines or uh, grids of lines um, which then represent, for instance, a windscreen antenna. It could also be used, of course, for conformal antennas on whatever curved surface. We still maintain Edit FECO as a kind of scripting environment for FECO and it's mainly for historical reasons before we had CAD FECO that was the main mechanism for creating FECO models, FECO files with the introduction of CAD FECO and in particular now also with the introduction of scripting in CAD FECO. Edit FECO might not be used that much anymore by new users or for the creation of new models but of course we have to be backwards compatible, uh, accommodate all existing old models and accommodate users who just like to have the freedom of that scripting interface. 
we have made a number of changes to Edit Fico. It basically got rewritten, taking all the feature requests we have received over the years. And it also got now the look and feel of the other user interface components, CAD FICO and POST FICO, by supporting the ribbon. Uh, another nice feature is maybe the syntax highlighting that we added, which makes it a bit easier to navigate through large and complex pre files. Moving away from the user interface side, focusing more on the electromagnetic kernel, we have made a number of extensions there as well. And of course, any new feature we add to the electromagnetic kernel also needs support in the user interface. For instance, the first one I'm going to discuss are higher order basis functions on curvilinear meshes for the method of moments and the multi-level fast multiple method. Sorry, we just have a bit of a noise interference I hear, um, but I think it's now better again. Uh, and for instance, here for these curvilinear meshes, a number of extensions were required in CAD FICO to be able to create curvilinear meshes uh, in post to view these meshes, and also, of course, the various import formats. So for instance, we support now importing Nastran meshes also with the curvilinear mesh elements. You see here one example um, of a spherical structure which is of course very well suited to using curvilinear meshes. On the left hand side is the traditional mesh using uh, flat mesh elements, uh, flat triangular patches on the right hand side you see curvilinear mesh elements which are much more suitable to represent such a curved geometry in connection with higher order basis functions that we supported already last year based on flat elements. These mesh elements can be larger than the typical lambda over 10 rule and can go up to about one lambda depending on the order and then the larger the mesh elements the more important it is to allow curved meshing in order to still approximate the geometry sufficiently uh, with a sufficient accuracy. If one uses a very fine mesh, one would also be able to represent the curvature just by using fine meshes. Of course. You see here the result for the electromagnetic solution where we have used two approaches. The first one so in the top image is using the traditional Rao Wilton Glisson basis functions where we use a lambda over 10 mesh. We end up in 3774 triangles and then it will use 5600 basis functions or unknowns for the method of moments matrix. The bottom graph, the bottom sphere is using higher order basis functions for the method of moments of the highest order that we have implemented, order 3.5. We can then mesh with only 72 triangles and by using curvilinear triangles of that size we can still approximate the curved structure nicely. Due to the higher order, the number of basis functions is not like for the Rao Wilkin Glisson case factor of 1.5 times the number of triangles. Here we have a much higher factor. Um, we have 1,300 basis functions approximately, but still about four times less than for the traditional Raoult and Glisson approach. You see here in the graph the radar cross-section for that sphere comparing the two solutions and they are basically lying on top of each other. And the main advantage is shown here on the right hand side by using about 4 or 4.4 times fewer unknowns the memory for the method of moments matrix can be reduced by the square of that number which is about 20 in this case. The runtime unfortunately is not as reduced as drastically. Uh, the evaluation of the higher order terms for the matrix fill and 
treating curved triangles requires quite some additional processing so that for that particular example the run times are similar but of course the larger the example the more and the more unknowns the less prominent will be the matrix fill phase and the matrix solution phase will start to, to dominate due to the cubic behavior in terms of the number of unknowns and then also for these higher order curvilinear models one will see a reduction in the run time. Another example is shown here Again, a spherical example chosen, chosen specifically because there's an exact solution. This is again a sphere with a plane wave, but now it's not a metallic sphere, it's a homogeneous dielectric sphere. And we calculate the near field inside the sphere. The next graph shows the result, where we have in blue the exact solution based on a Mi series. We have with the red dots the method of moment solution using flat triangles with Rao World and Glisten, basically what FECO offered two years ago. The black crosses are representing a method of moment solution with higher order basis functions on a curvilinear mesh. And we have added, just to complete the spectrum of different solvers, we have added a result from another tool. Uh, it's a multiple, multiple method solution. And you see here, basically all agrees. The advantage of having an exact solution is that we can look at the error specifically. And this is shown in the next slide. The error um, of the solution inside the sphere. And you see here the red line, the method of moments with the traditional approach, is having an error of about 0.5% roughly on average, which is very good but compared then to the higher order curvilinear solution, which has an order of about, say, roughly one order of magnitude lower on average, you can see the improvement this is achieved in addition to the reduction of the memory and the saving of runtime for the larger models. <coughs> one last example here for the application of higher order basis functions on curvilinear elements is the radar cross-section calculation of a missile at a frequency of 3 gigahertz. You see here on the left graph the traditional model with planar triangles using about 20,000 triangles. On the right hand side a mesh size of lambda over 3, so it's 3 times coarser than the left model resulting in about 1,200 triangles. And we have solved here the monostatic radar cross-section. You see here the comparison of these two methods. And you can see um, about 30 dB below the main radar cross-section, some slight deviations is here where I have the mouse between the red, uh, between sorry, the green and the blue graph, or here on the right hand side as well, which are not caused by inaccuracies of our method, which are purely caused by solving different problems. Because the one with a flat mesh and the one with a curved mesh are representing essentially slightly different geometries. I mentioned already in the overview on my slide in the beginning that we had in the past for many, many years the ability in FECO to compute continuous frequency results using a component that we call ADAPT FECO where you just specify the start and the end frequency and in between you don't have to worry. We have implemented a similar technology. It's not based on the same type of algorithm. It's a different algorithm, but the end effect from a user perspective is very similar. Uh, we have implemented that also for far field calculations, both for radiation problems of antennas, but also for scattering problems like radar cross sections, where this can be used as a function of the angle. And of course, if you plot it versus frequency, we had it already in the past. And this is illustrated here nicely in that graph. The left graph, the red curve, shows, for instance, some antenna pattern versus angle. And as you all know, if you have a large problem, 
you will get many uh, nulls and, and high variation of far field patterns or scattering pre uh, patterns, uh, but also the runtime to compute the far field is linear with the number of far field points and linear with the number of unknowns. So you don't necessarily want to always calculate far fields at 0 0.01 degree sampling rate. In addition to taking very long, also all your files will be very large. So here we have computed, for instance, the far field at a 5 degree sampling. And clearly for that specific example, this is too coarse. You see on the right hand side with the blue graph how it should look. Um, and uh, the red graph will miss some of the null, some of the maxima. One solution is finding sap, uh, sampling finer, and the other solution is what we have now implemented, a continuous sampling, so you don't specify any angular increment. We take care automatically in providing a continuous result for the far field. Um, here, one example, we have the previous method, the traditional far field sampling, here indicated uh, by the, you know, it's even too small for me to read, I think the blue line and the fast method now is the green line. Um, previously, it took with 1,441 samples in this case to get the radar cross-section cut about 30 seconds and the, with the accelerations we have made this can be reduced to 8 seconds and it is not limited to now these 1,441 samples. It could be on a much finer scale. The way we have implemented these continuous far fields and the accelerations for the far fields is based on extensions with a spherical mode uh, decomposition and internal representation of far fields by spherical modes in FICO. And also when working with the spherical modes directly, we have made a number of improvements and extensions. The first one is the limit, and, and we know some of you, some of the users have complained a bit in the past. Um, if you use, for instance, a, a grass from TICRA and export there, a uh, very high gain antenna pattern in the spherical modes. One might need many, many modes. And FECO started to show numerical instability and you were getting warnings about overflows if the order um, of the modes was extending. It was uh, 70, uh, 87. We have changed the way how we calculate Legendre polynomials internally to use another recursion algorithm and that limit has been removed. We have also significantly accelerated the extraction of the spherical modes. Um, and lastly, when you have a far field pattern of echo and you want to do a spherical mode analysis and then export those modes in the past, you had to specify the number of modes you want, say 10 or 20 or 87 if you wanted to go to the maximum and now you can go up to 300. The problem here is if you specify too few, the spherical modes might not capture your full radiation pattern. If you specify too many, it is accurate, but it might be an overkill in terms of runtime. So we added an option to not specify the number of modes that should be exported, but to let FECO automatically determine how many modes are required to capture the full radiated power. Here is an example for the extraction of a far field pattern into spherical modes. The top part of the slide represents a spherical horn antenna and we do of a, of a, circular, a circular cylindrical horn antenna and we do a mode extraction this was possible in the past and is now possible. It requires 31 modes or an order of 31 resulting in 2046 modes. FICO Suite 6.2 took about two minutes to extract the modes. In FICO Suite 6.3, due to the various accelerations, 
we are able to do that now in about 10 seconds. The bottom graph shows the same cylindrical horn antenna placed in front of a parabolic reflector and then many many more modes are required due to the high gain structure or nature of that structure. Uh, the order of the modes is 175 uh, resulting then in about 62,000 modes. In FECO Suite 6.2 or before it was not possible to do such a spherical mode decomposition due to the order being too high, FECO would have run into numerical instabilities. In FECO speed 6.3 it is possible. It still takes a bit of time uh, in this particular run here on that particular computer about just less than two hours, but at least it's possible now. Staying with the antenna models, we have had in FECO already for many many years the ability to model transmitting antennas not by actually modeling the antenna but by including far field patterns or near field apertures or what I discussed just now spherical modes representing a radiator. On the receiving side we always had the ability to include a far field pattern as an ideal receiving antenna and we have extended that now to be also able to use a near field aperture defined by a near field distribution and by means of a formula which is called the use formulation shown here on that slide one is able to import a near field distribution in a plane or on a spherical surface or cylindrical surface, the same as we had for the transmitting antennas and then use these as a receiving antenna. And this is very useful of course, typically there is duality, the principle of reciprocity, so even if you want to model a receiving antenna, say the radiation pattern, it might be easier and more efficient from a computational point of view to rather use reciprocity and model the transmitting antenna instead, but for antenna coupling problems where you have one transmitting antenna and one receiving antenna, it's unavoidable to then model the actual receiving antenna and uh, that is now accomplished and similar for spherical modes. Uh, in addition to using spherical modes as a transmitting antenna, one can now also import into FECO a spherical mode representation which is either directly computed inside of FECO by analyzing first the antenna alone or which can also come from any other source like a measurement system or some other code and uh, then use this as an excitation in FECO for antenna placement studies and so forth. Moving away from the antenna part uh, as such or the single antennas as such looking at some other extensions that we have made in FECO with 6.3 we have introduced two years ago a technique to model finite antenna arrays efficiently. For infinite arrays we have the periodic boundary conditions. If the finite size is critical and the mutual coupling we introduced a method called the domain Green's function method DGFM and the one extension was made there which allows individual elements of the finite sized array not only to be positioned at an arbitrary location in space so it doesn't have to be a regular grid, the grid can be irregular but we also now allow rotation of individual elements. And the table here just shows this is a very small example only nine elements, three by three array. Um, the method of normal solution is indicated in this column. The domain Green's function method applied to the same problem is shown here on the right hand side. You see that the runtime is uh, reduced for the matrix solution by a factor of 10 and this is again similar to what I explained earlier with high order basis functions. For large problems this is the time that dominates over matrix fill. The total time in this case is not reduced very much because the example is so small. Uh, the memory is again reduced quite a bit 
um, basically by a factor of 9 as there are 9 error elements. And on the right hand side you see a couple of S parameters and we have the solid lines and we have the dots for the two methods and they are lying basically on top of each other for the two methods when one compares those. Characteristic mode analysis is a feature that was introduced uh, also last year um, and I think we are still in FECO the first and the only commercial code offering this analysis capability. I cannot go too much into detail here about the method as such. All the features that we had in previous releases already introduced. There is in two weeks time a webinar at the same time specifically focusing on characteristic mode analysis and its application for practical antenna design purposes. I am covering here in this Figure Speed 6.3 overview presentation only the new features that have been added to this characteristic mode analysis. The first one is the ability to do a characteristic mode analysis not only for metallic perfectly conducting structures but to also use dielectric problems in connection with the surface equivalence principle of the method of moments where one then gets two sets of fundamental current solutions for the different modes one for the electric and one for the equivalent magnetic surface currents. We have also introduced a normalization scheme to normalize the various modes and the main motivation here is to be able to identify radiating and non-radiating modes but in particular to get a measure for the next feature uh, kind of a modal weighting coefficients. The next feature is uh, shown in this slide. Essentially the characteristic mode analysis works on a specific geometry structure only without that there is an excitation. So you have an antenna or a vehicle or an aircraft, whatever, and one looks at the fundamental current distributions and the related radiation patterns, nuclear distributions and so forth that are supported by the structure without any excitation. By adding an excitation, specific modes are excited, others are not, and we have now added the ability to basically synthesize any given solution for a specific excitation into modes and then give you the coefficients of each mode as they get excited. And you see here one example, this is that MIMO ring antenna example that is also part of our example guide models. Um, where we first compute the different modes and we see here for instance on the left hand side the graphical representation of the currents of mode 1 and one can then excite the structure uh, for instance here with these two voltage sources I uh, just get the cursor there um, there are two edge sources applied to that ring structure and then you get a current which looks very similar which might give the indication already here graphically and visually that that specific excitation primarily drives that mode 1. And this can also be confirmed by doing then that modal synthesis in FECO. You see here from the FECO output file at the bottom an extraction and one can see clearly that mode 1 is excited 100%, mode 2, 3, 4 and so forth are excited 0.00%. And of course in general for more complicated structure with an arbitrary excitation it will not only be one mode that is excited but a combination of different modes and one gets them here a feeling and can then tune the antenna, move the antenna position and so forth to excite the desired modes. And I think the most prominent extension we have made in regards with the mode tracking 
is the ability um, to track the modes uh, versus frequency, for instance, if there's a plot. Traditionally, if we solve the problem at different frequencies, we will, at each frequency, get a number of modes that exist. And if one does a frequency sweep, it can happen that some modes disappear, others are starting to come into existence, and that could mean that a specific mode, which is maybe mode 1 at one frequency, suddenly becomes mode 3 at another frequency, because at that other frequency, two other modes exist. Uh, which have a higher modal significance at that uh, frequency and are thus first in the numbering scheme. And uh, what you get here, then if one just uses the traditional numbering and allocates an index per frequency, is shown, for instance, here at the bottom left graph, where we plot the, uh, I think it's the modal significance of the characteristic angle versus frequency for a patch antenna problem where we use four different configurations uh, with different substrates, different dielectric properties and we track mode number two as it comes out of the modal solver. And you clearly visually already see that there are jumps which don't really make sense physically with the mode tracking that we have implemented this kind of correlation algorithm um, we get now the graph on the right hand side where we use the numbering at the lowest frequency and then try to remap as we go along over frequency and keep mode 2 for instance allocated to that same even though if you might run your analysis at the frequency of 6 GHz what is mode number 2 now might then be mode number 3 or mode number 1 so that one also has now to keep in mind that if you change your start frequency the numbering scheme might change. We have made a number of extensions also with regards to our integrated cable modeling and many of those were already available as part of a feature update of Victor Suite 6.2.2 earlier this year in 2013 but also similar to the windstream modeling tool that I uh, touched on earlier. They are officially part of this Figure Suite 6.3 release and we have also added some more new features now specifically to 6.3. There are a number of extensions. I've just picked a few. Um, one is, for instance, a tool, a find cable tool, which allow you to identify and isolate specific elements of a cable harness or connectors or path or some cable instances. Essentially, when dealing with complicated cable harnesses as for instance resulting from the import of KBL files. We have also extended our snapping capability to accommodate the fact that typically a cable is running at some kind of fixed offset from a surface, uh, so it's now possible to define a kind of an offset in the snap dialog and then that tool will snap at a specific offset and allow then the creation of a cable path. On the electromagnetic kernel side, there were also a number of extensions that were made to the cable modeling. The concept of a cable harness as known from the user interface is now also implemented inside the kernel which makes it possible to group certain elements in a certain way. Uh, for instance, also coupling calculations are done. We have added the ability to connect multiple signals to a single connector uh, which is a requirement from many KBL files. The ability of FECO to store a solution to an STR file and then for later run read the solution from this STR file and reuse that has been extended to now also support cable harnesses. And the last bullet item 
is was also a request from one of our customers. If one is using cable harness modeling in FECO, we internally use the multi-connect multi-conductor transmission line theory, which converts cables into equivalent spy circuits, and we have in FECO built in a spy solver, which then solves the circuit part in connection for instance, with the method of moments. But this particular customer didn't want to use FECO's built-in processing capabilities. They wanted to include the cable harness modeling into a larger circuit simulation, including other components which are not part of the FECO model. So we added the ability to export the spy circuit file generated inside of FECO for the cable harness modeling and then reuse it in whatever other circuit simulator is required. A number of other, maybe smaller changes and extensions were made to the electromagnetic kernel of FECO that I would like to discuss now briefly in the remaining last 15 minutes of this webinar. If one is modeling closed problems with the final element pro method, closed means that there is no radiation to the outside, uh, like for instance here this coaxial cable, which is completely enclosed by a metallic cylinder and the two ends have ports on there. Um, then in the past we were still using a method of moments, final element hybrid method, and using the method of moments as a kind of radiation boundary condition for the finite element method. If one knows this is a closed problem with PEC surfaces, there cannot be any radiation. FECO was giving the correct solution, but maybe a bit with an overkill in the resources. One could avoid that in the past with a checkbox decouple the mem mom fem solution but this has been automated. FECO detects now if there's a closed problem without any radiation and will automatically not use the method of moments as a boundary condition. On the finite element method, but also for the finite, for the multi-level fast multiple method, these two techniques require iterative solvers. It's not like the method of moments where one can use a direct solver by using an LU decomposition. And these iterative solvers are sometimes quite challenging regarding the convergence. We have added many preconditioners to FECO. In the past, we have parallelized those, like for instance, SPY for the MLFMM. But we still have sometimes observed problems for our customers on large or very large parallel runs when, for instance, certain 4-byte integer limits were exceeded regarding indexing arrays or sometimes there were some memory spikes due to memory reallocations and we have also seen some crashes for some specific MPI implementations which we were not able to trace properly because it's also sometimes not reproducible once it works, the next time it doesn't work. And we have tried to address these by adding another parallel distributed preconditioner based on a MUMS library, multifrontal, massively parallel solver. And we have tested that with many, many examples and have found that it works quite well. And this is now the new default for these runs. And we have in particular also added an out-of-core capability for the sparse LU factorization part um, on Intel MKL platforms and for parallel runs. Unfortunately, if one does a sequential run on an AMD platform, it will not be available. Here, just one example for the multi-level fast multiple method, comparing FICO speed 6.2 and 6.3 with both the in-core and the out-of-core options. The bar chart on the left-hand side shows the memory um, in gigabyte, and on the right-hand side you see the CPU time for the preconditioning phase. 
if I look only at the example where we solved that problem with 10 parallel processes, one can see here that Fico Suite 6.2 took between 10 and 11 gigabyte. In Fico Suite 6.3, with the in-core solver, we were able to reduce that to around 8.5 gigabyte. And when using the out-of-core capability, it's reduced to about 6 gigabyte. So almost, not quite, but almost a reduction by a factor of 2 in memory when using Suite 6.3 with the out-of-core solver. If one looks at the run times, and again maybe focusing on the right gra graph for the 10 runs, we see here a run time for Fico Suite 6.2 of about 500, maybe 550 seconds. The blue bar indicates Fico Suite 6.3 in core a reduction by roughly about 20% in runtime. And what is also very nice to see is by going out of core, the penalty on pace for reducing the memory is actually not too much. There's a small increase of the black bar versus the blue bar, but we are still well below the green bar indicating the runtime of Fico Suite 6.2. Another extension we have made regarding parallel scaling and efficiency is for the parallel method of moment solver when using large problems and or large resources in terms of many number of parallel processes. This is maybe an extreme example. We have shown here the scaling in terms of the runtime for the LU decomposition of the matrix as a function of the number of parallel processes. The largest one was used here 49 and it's specifically not a multiple of two. Uh, in order to trigger these effects, normally one would solve always say 16, 32, 64 uh, parallel. And we have also used only a hundred megabit per second internet connect ethernet connection to have a high latency which will and low bandwidth which will overemphasize these communication problems. And you see in Fico Suite 6.2 the blue line, the runtime was reduced only up to about 20 parallel processes, but then when adding more and more parallel processes, the runtime was actually getting longer and longer. And with the new changes that were made in Fico Suite 6.3, we get the red line. There is at some, case, uh, some stage a kind of saturation. Runtime doesn't get reduced anymore due to the communication over it, specifically for that slow interconnect, but at least it doesn't increase uh, as drastically as Fico Suite 6.2 did. FECO supported, and I mentioned it earlier in connection with the array modeling, uh, periodic boundary conditions. A number of users have complained that sometimes the runtime when using that features gets very long. We have implemented interpolation techniques for this periodic boundary condition feature in order to get quite drastic reductions in runtime. You see here four in that table, four different examples, Vivaldi antenna, Jerusalem cross for frequency selective surfaces and so forth. You see the run times of Fico Suite 6.2 and 6.3 and the total acceleration factor, the speed up factor, up to about here 45 times faster. Uh, the bottom example is maybe not showing such a good acceleration, it's only about a factor of five faster. But the reason is here a lot of time is spent on the waveguide modeling as such and not the periodic boundary condition. So this lets um, me, leads me to the end. The overview of the most prominent features in the new release FACO Suite 6.3. Many, many more features were added and you are welcome to read through the detailed release notes in the PDF document that is shipped with the Fico Suite 6.3 installation or which is also accessible uh, in the members area for users um, as a download.
for those of you who are now getting excited with, for instance, the CAD fixing part, but you don't have an up-to-date installation of FECL, you are welcome to request an evaluation version and try and play around with the new features. And I want to emphasize again, FECL can be installed in parallel to other existing old versions. So you can install FECL Suite 6.3 on your computer and while you play around with existing with new features, you can use the existing, say, FECL Suite 6.2 release still in production mode to finish some of your projects if you are concerned that there might be problems in converting the files or that you might get different results, which shouldn't be the case. But at least you can reassure yourself this way. Uh, having said that, thank you very much for your attendance. And if you have any questions, you're welcome to type those. We will see them and can then uh, read them. Uh, let me see, there are already some coming through. Uh, so I must just get that window a bit larger. Okay, the first question is, uh, can we make the slides available? Uh, the whole webinar will be recorded and will be available on the members area and also those participants who have maybe registered but were unable to attend, attend will get a link sent. I don't see any other questions on an electromagnetic side or on the user interface side. So let me then thank all of you for your attendance. We hope that all the new features of FACO Suite 6.3 will be very useful and will be of assistance to you uh, for your projects and your work. Thank you and have a good day further.